Good morning to you. Can you see me? Right. Welcome back to Better Pace and Fitness. This is this going to be another random day in the life vlog sort of thing? Uh, vlog. Because I haven't videoed a week. A video a week all day. All day. No, video a day all week. That's the one. Um, but yeah, Friday, 7th. It is 10 past 5. Off to work. Uh, at work six till two today, and then what's this? But I'm gonna train. And I've got a PT session, and then I'll show you what my day is like. Might do a full day of eating again, because people seem to like them sort of stuff. And just show you what I'm getting up to. But I'll make this intro very short because I realise I talk with this car way too much. And I will see you in a bit. What was going on in that team that really, from when you joined, they were kind of also rounds in the side of the world, so the dominant force. Let me in, please. Hey, we're in. Oh. Well, here is the food for the day. For work, anyway. I don't know what food when I eat it, how I eat it, why I eat it. No, I'm not going to say why I eat it, but I probably won't film too much. But I will film the train. Trust me. But, i put this in there. Magic, absolute magic. Right, see you in a bit. The glamorous life of a PT, turn up the class. <sighs> Set up. Chicken stir fry from last night. That is the breakfast. A little bit of dark chocolate. Pre workout. We are training two hours, roughly. Whenever I finish my shift. Nothing exciting. See ya. When will I see ya? No. When I train. Right. Hopefully, we're on. Finish my shift, it's time to train. Got the body session. I'm gonna do a voiceover for this one. Gym's still quite quiet, but I'm gonna do a little voiceover. So, take you through the session, what I do. Had my pre, monster, white monster, and now I've got intro, 30 grams of slick dextrin, but can we get into it? Right, people, welcome to the new voiceover slash my face think. I don't know. Trying it out anyway. Recording this on Sunday night. Sorry, the video is not out on time, but busy day. Uh, got the blue leg blockers on. I don't hear. But starting off anyway, I'll get into it. Warm up. Just thought I'd put this in to start off with. We're doing great stretch, general thoracic mobility, hip mobility. As always, I do them pretty much before every session. Five either side. Dynamic black wounds. Great for shoulder health. Open up um, the shoulders. Squeeze the shoulder blades back. Um, when you're kind of handcuffing your hand behind your head. 10 of them, between eight and 10 is absolutely fine. They will burn your shoulders like mad, open them up, especially when you're doing some overhead pressing. 10 push-ups, nice and strict, full range of motion, a little bit of a stretch at the bottom. And then I just did some random, random stretch because I fancied it. And like I said, we're doing some overhead stuff just to loosen everything off. As long as you feel good before you go into workout, then 
that's the main thing. Uh, Ian was training one of my online clients, one of my good mates as well. He is doing yeah, the same yeah. session, well, similar session to me, overhead pressing. He's also set up an Instagram. Uh, he's Animal. doing his nutrition degree. Set up an Instagram for that. He posts some that decent, great decent ball. content on there. Decent little meals, nice little overnight oat recipes, breakfast recipes, Instagram, whatever. I am nutrition. So give him a follow. I am <laughs> nutrition. So for me today, starting off with strict press. I've done push press, strict press. I alternate between the two, but we're building up to a heavy, heavy four. So we're literally an all-out set of four. I think there's 55 or 57.5 on the bar. Can't remember. But going to failure if it's not four. Like I tried five here, wasn't my day. But strict press anyway. So now into some volume work, some, still some strength work. Four sets of eight, but we'd go in every two and a half minutes on the minute. So set your timer. You have two and a half minutes to do your pull-ups and your dumbbell strict press. And then whatever time you have left after that, that's your rest period. So keeping the session flowing. Again, I've added a little bit of weight. You can see I've got a little 4 kg weight in between my legs. Nothing crazy. We're trying to keep the technique decent. Get the chin over the bar, drive the elbows back. And then with the strict press, I prefer dumbbell strict press a lot more than barbell. Just because if you think about barbell, you have to kind of pass it over through round the head sorry I should say rather than dumbbells you can just go straight overhead it's a lot easier on the shoulders uh, push presses and strict presses with a barbell you need a little bit more shoulder mobility as well so or wrist mobility I should say but I like doing at least one set of barbell just for heavy compounds yeah so this is my last set I dropped the body weight I think I did two sets three sets of eight with four kg and then one set with body weight and just trying to get the chin over the bar, keeping it as strict as possible, trying not to swing. Don't mind me taking a sip. Best flavour going. And I'm doing this in one take. Because this, well, this is the second time, but I accidentally realised my mic wasn't on, so take two. Yeah, last set of pull-ups, straight into strict press, make sure I'm squeezing my glutes so I'm not leaning back too much. Driving overhead, straight arms and going as low down as I naturally can. Any lower than kind of there for me, and I'm putting a little bit too much pressure on the shoulder joint, so keeping it strict. Again, with the dumbbells, you can kind of slightly internally rotate your shoulder and then at the top X, so almost like a little Arnold press, which I like to do. And I felt these have been benefiting my shoulders a lot more than doing lateral raises. Don't know what it is, but I have, and there's me disgustingly flexing. Horrible person. Bye bye. There's the end off. <laughs> session done so next same sort of concept every two minutes on the minute dips and d handle pull downs. so again working uh, overhead in terms of the pull downs and dips because they just need a little bit more chest and need a little bit more triceps and the dips will help with your bench press your overhead press and you need to add in some body weight stuff into your workouts if you're not get on it uh, my range motion is quite deep to be fair as well so maybe don't have to go as far but anyway Body weights, keeping the body weight, I think I ended up going 12, 10, 8 on the dips and then lap pull downs, I tried to increase the weight a little bit each set because it's my first time doing these in a while. D handles, the reason why we're doing D handles is because it allows a little bit of internal rotation or external, whatever rotation of the elbow joint. Uh, your elbow doesn't just flex, it also rotates, so adding the D handles on. Yeah, it relieves a little bit of pain in the elbows and also lets you put your body in a natural position where it wants to be. Some people naturally might want to go supinated to palms facing in, some people might want to go neutral or even just like that slight rotation. Uh, it's a little bit more, like, meh, a little bit better for the lats as well if you can get your elbows directly in line rather than rowing outwards. I'm getting wrong. Pause. Right. We're back. Got a phone call halfway through. You know what, I'm just going to roll with it. We're going to keep it going anyway. Back on the dips, same thing, trying to go to failure on this last set. I'll mute that so you don't hear it in the background. Uh, go to failure on the last set, and then same thing on the pull, the, the pull, the D handle pull downs, that is the one. This is going great for the first attempt, but never mind. Drive the elbow straight back, like I said before, try and not let the shoulders round too much. It's a habit that a lot of people have, especially on pull ups, I have it myself. Try and keep everything pulled back and pull the shoulder blade then down. Not so much backwards, but more down than anything. Get a little bit more lack activation. Just going down as low as I can, trying to keep my chest up. And yeah, 
don't mind the slight lean back and pull downs. Just a little, little lean. But as long as you're not being that person in the gym that's throwing themselves up and down for fun. And not even lifting the weight properly. Don't be that guy. But pretty tough. See, I'm dead. That's what you do when you don't have a lot of rest period and you're doing higher volume. Doing these EMOM style of training stuff definitely helps. Anyway, a bit of bodybuilding. Sort of. So low cable bicep curls one of the best cable well one of the best bicep exercises that you can do and muscle mentors are a big fan of this and if they're a fan of it i'm a fan of it so follow the muscle mentors if you haven't already Alan, Luke, I can't the rest of them that's bad isn't it never mind um but resistance it kind of matches the resistance profile of your biceps strength profile that's why it's so good so you're weaker at the top, strong at the bottom, and this matches up perfectly so you can get full range of motion. The pump you get is fantastic. So going to failure, anywhere between 10 and 15 reps, keep the weight pretty light, try and keep thinking about rotating the pinky outwards or in that supinated grip to get that extra little bit of contraction. Anyway, close grip push-ups, because I'm terrible at push-ups, working a bit more triceps, a little bit more chest as well. Pausing at the bottom, all the way down, driving up doing it properly so I could bash these out and get 20 plus reps but doing it really slow and controlled pausing at the bottom makes it a lot more difficult gets the muscles firing a lot more so three sets of this pretty much the failure to nearly finish off the workout the next bit that's coming up is pretty tough so you'll see around the net I think this is my second to last set anyway the fun bit conditioning 12 minute EMOM pretty simple First exercise, kettlebell clean and press. So I've got two 16 kgs. I think I started off at 12 reps and then the next set I dropped down to 10 because it just, but the first set I felt fine. Second set it hit me. So I kept it at tens for the rest of it. Uh, gorilla rows, almost like a pendulum row, but with kettlebells, take your feet a little bit wider, driving the elbows back, trying not to use your, your whole body to drive up, just drive the elbows back, squeeze the shoulder blades. Nice and simple, that was the second minute, so 16 reps of them, and then the last minute was everyone's favourite burpees, trying to work on these a lot during lockdown, and I've got a newfound love for them, so 12 burpees, I'm a big lad, so 12 seems like it's a, it's a good 5 minute trip to get down to the floor and then to get back up, so 12 is alright. Put this last little bit in, which is me absolutely dying on the last round, I thought I'd just show you it, how bad I breathe, trying to breathe nasally, nasally? nasal breathing just because apparently it's maybe better for you so I'll try it but dying my shoulders were killing us obviously I'm using a lot of momentum through the legs to drive the weight up here which is fine getting that kettlebell action so adding this little bit in at the end so I called it functional bodybuilding it's a little bit of like crossfit a little bit of bodybuilding a little bit of this but it's more still training to look good but it's more more focused on feeling good how you feel so doing this at the end of a workout makes you feel so much better like the days of me just doing bicep curls and bench press and that'll do like at the end of the workout i, I want to add something in that gets my heart rate going gets me sweating gets me feeling like i've worked and even just i always do it at least 10 20 minutes at the end of my workouts now get my heart rate going i feel so much better for it and having some sort of conditioning now I feel performance is, is probably my priority over aesthetics the days of bodybuilding for me are done well it's never really bodybuilding but never mind. I'm just rambling to try and make this clip last don't know what else to say really this is just me killing myself but the style of training I've enjoyed I think in the fitness industry it's becoming a lot more popular I've talked about it in podcasts I think I've recorded a few on it um, podcast that should be out in a few weeks adding some conditioning in look good, feel good live good, move good, all that stuff I'm just rambling and then we're finishing off with babies here like I said I'm just keeping this clip in just to keep it rolling oh, I'm going to look back at this video and think Brendan why didn't you just like write something down and think of something good to say like something really intelligent about how good EMOMs and conditioning is and how it's going to benefit you but just just move around for 10-15 minutes at the end of a work, can't get a sweat on you'll feel so much better. Endorphins will be released. And burpees are also good for you. But full burpees, chest and floor, jumping up, touching my head, 
none of these kick back burpees or up downs what do you call it chest floor but like I said I've, I've kind of got a newfound love for burpees after lockdown been doing plenty of them but I was roped off after this got a good little pump on as well to be fair and I got some good photos afterwards so if you don't follow me on Instagram follow me on Instagram at Ben and Beerson Fitness there's me done I'm dying and it will go to a clip of Adam, who is a PT at the gym, who is addicted to MV3. MV3 is in his blood. Look at this. So, right. <laughs> See you in a bit. No. Pulse workout. One sec. What? There we go. One very hot bagel. And the standard. Whey, oats, banana, berries. Bush. Right. That's just about in line. We're done. Didn't talk too much, didn't film the loads. Uh, well, I filmed the session. A naughty little demon. Uh, I ended up talking to people for longer than I intended, so I'll bush for time. Uh, gonna get off, got a PT session, and then gonna go and chill out, relax. Got my last meal here, so my last meal, like I said, was just my normal post workout bagel, 80 grams of oats, 60 grams of whey, 100 grams of berries, and this is gonna start playing, and then 100 grams of banana. Uh, just with water mixed up and then I've got a little little meal for after my PT which is 150 grams of delicious lentils by by Aldi by Aldi from Aldi about 100 and f don't know 40 grams of prawns I think 120 140 some spinach I don't know if I've got any sauce but I'll have that in a bit I'll probably talk to you then um, but yeah I'll catch you in a little bit longer a little bit longer about an hour or so I haven't talked to the camera much, but anyway, gonna get off. Alright, we're back. <coughs> oh, my fingers not on. Gonna quickly eat meal numero three. Like I said before, lentils, some prawns, and spinach. I'm not really. God, that was tight. Not really cut my macros as of. Well, I am, but today I'm not because I've kind of been eating a similar sort of thing each day so my post workout meal is always the same I normally have like a chicken and rice meal um, but obviously I have my stir fry instead and then this is a snack I normally have this either with tuna or fish um, so a tuna or fish tuna or prawns so sorry I couldn't wait it's a bit rude but that's the day's work done quarter past six Gonna get off home. I think we're gonna go for a little pint. Have a quick little pint at home. Because my Friday is obviously a long day. And I enjoy one. So gotta gotta have a little bit of enjoyment in life. If you enjoy a pint, have a pint, mate. Just train hard. We've trained hard today, it's been a long day, so see ya when we're gonna pint. She doesn't care we're filming. Smile, we've car come past. Back home. <laughs> she doesn't want to do it. Goodbye. <laughs> Going out for a few beers. Just the two. Nothing more, nothing crazy. Sensible one. See you at the pub. <laughs> kind of demolished them. Go on. Go on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. So, I accidentally put the lid for this on top of the toaster while she was putting a bagel on. Oops. Anyway, last meal after 
After Brian ate half the nachos, I didn't really have that much of them. More than half. Uh, 60 grams of the bedtime, well, pretty much casein. 60 grams of casein, bit of milk, peanut butter, and of course some Biscoff. A little bit of Biscoff spread. And because we feel like it, some MS Dinky Honey and Mustard Sausages. We're sharing them. They are fantastic, I must say. So, there's another little day in the life. I'm not putting the macros on the screen because I'm not counting them. And I'm just guessing. And Brandy's got a fist spread in the vehicle. <laughs> right. Close the video. That's just the standard Friday. Friday, I kind of. We're going to watch up and cry. Yeah, we're going to watch up as well after this. So. Oh, I don't even know if this is videoing, to be fair. I can't remember. Anyway, is it Ron Red? I think so. Right. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Do whatever you need to do. Share it, follow me on Instagram, Better Breeze and Fitness, all that stuff. Say it. Say it. What? That's the one. That one. You gotta finish it. See you in the next video. Or what? Over and out. What did I say? Pop it. Cause yeah. Oh, because you always say that. Three, two, one. Over and out. <laughs> Pop it. <laughs> right. See you in the next video anyway. <laughs>